Hi, thanks for joining the Colorado Energy Office's short video clips. Today's presentation is on HRVs versus ERVs. Hi, I'm Robbie Schwarz with Built Tank Inc. And today I want to talk to you about ventilation systems. Uh, the energy code allows you to ventilate your house. Uh, and it re actually requires that you ventilate your house because it also requires that your house can't be more leaky than three or five air changes depending on the climate zone that you're building in. But in our climate zone here in Colorado, climate zone five, we can't be leakier than three air changes per hour. So the, the building code has really adopted the sound building science principle of building your house tight and ventilating it right and it allows you to ventilate in three different ways you're allowed to use a supply ventilation system an exhaust ventilation system or a balanced ventilation system and today i want to focus in on the balanced ventilation system this is a balanced ventilation system this hrv uh, gives us the ability to bring in air from the outside across a coil uh, to the inside of the house and then at simultaneously air from inside the house across the coil and then out to the outside of the house. So we can bring in fresh air, we can filter that air before it goes into the house and we can exchange some of its heat and if you used an ERV you could exchange some of the moisture in that air as well and bring that uh, energy and keep that energy inside the house, keep the moisture inside the house, or keep the moisture outside the house, depending on your climate zone. So they're really good systems to keep a balanced pressure inside the house, while also bringing fresh air from the outside that gets filtered, and to control the energy that is inside the house or outside the house, and keeping that moisture and energy either in one direction or the other direction, depending on how you want to do it. The magic is these coils. Uh, this coil um, here uh, is, you think of it as a car, cardboard box that's layered in different areas. That corrugation there allows air to move into the house and move from outside the house. They cross each other, but the streams of air don't physically touch each other. It's, a, it's an actual type of heat exchanger to be able to transfer energy that's in the air that's going out of the house into the air that's going into the house if it's cold outside, for example. So energy is always moving from higher concentrations to lower concentrations, and it's able to do that across the coil um, here. And again, you're able to filter that air. Now, when we have these types of systems, it's really important to duct them and duct them properly here, and then ensure that you can measure the flow through these different ports and understand that you're getting the right um, number of cubic feet of air into that house and out of that house and when you have that balance there and when we talk about balance it's a pressure balance inside the house you're not creating a positive pressure or a negative pressure where you're pushing air into our wall assemblies or sucking air through our wall assemblies we want that neutral pressure uh, there so that we can have more durable houses as well because remember air carries moisture, air carries heat, air carries pollutants, and we want to make sure that those things leave and enter the house in the locations that we want them to, not randomly through uh, potential holes in the building envelope here. So these systems allow us to do that, and if we duct them properly, generally we want the supply air going into our living spaces like bedrooms and living rooms and those types of areas, and we want to exhaust from are polluted areas like bathrooms, kitchens, laundries, and those types of locations. They're best when they are ducted independently. You can duct them with existing HVAC ductwork in the house, but they're best when they're ducted independently there uh, to get the best results here. And you want to choose an ERV or an HRV. And the difference between those two things is that an HRV only has the ability of doing this air transport from inside to outside and capturing, recapturing heat. Whereas a ERV has the ability to do that same transport of air from inside to outside in that neutral pressure plane, but has the ability of doing it and also transporting um, heat and moisture. So if I have more moisture outside the house, it will take the moisture 
that's coming in with this air and then direct it back outside. If I have more moisture inside the house, it will take that moisture into the coil and direct some of it back into the house. Now, I say some of it because they aren't 100% efficient. They're somewhere in the range of 60 to 80, 85% efficient, depending on the model that you choose. And you can see uh, there are three different units behind me here. And so there are a lot of different units on the market. So you want to size it properly for your house uh, so that you get the, uh, the right ventilation rate. Uh, and you need to be aware that any ventilation that you use is going to increase your energy costs. Um, there, but it gives us that sound building science principle of building our houses tight, ventilating it right, so we get control and predictability of the air that's moving in and out of our houses. That control and predictability increases our energy efficiency, increases our long-term building durability, and these devices help increase the air quality in our houses as well. As we build tighter, we want to filter the air that's coming in, and these types of strategies uh, help us a are able to filter that air and exchange the air so that we have uh, fresh clean air for the occupants to breathe um, there. So when we're talking about uh, building our houses tight and then putting a hole in the house so that we're bringing in ventilation, it's all about the control and the predictability of the air that's moving through our houses there. If I just have random holes around the building envelope, I'm going to be setting myself up for, uh, first of all, inefficiency and second of all, uh, potential building durability issues. So thanks so much for joining me today on this quick lesson about uh, whole house controlled mechanical ventilation and specifically balanced ventilation systems. And thanks to the Governor's Energy Office here in Colorado for sponsoring this video. Take care.